the slow up No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up I don't ever slow up No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't Hey team, I was recently asked a question And that is how much can you improve your 5k time in 30 days okay um the, it, this is a normal question but it's also a question that a lot of athletes that again naturally want fast results are asking okay my tough love answer to you if you're asking the question of how much time can i drop in a matter of 30 days in a 5k i think the you can barely train properly for a 5k in a matter of, of one month Okay, so the better question to ask is how much time can I drop off my 5K in 12 weeks? Or how much, how much time can I drop off my 5K in four months? That's the better question because it, it takes a minimum of 28 days for your body to adapt just to any specific stress load you're placing on your body. So it's going to be very hard to drop off several minutes off of a 5K in 30 days. Now, you definitely can start to build some endurance and build some general fitness in a matter of a month. So, you know, if you're starting from scratch and you've never run a 5K or maybe you've run one 5K and say you ran it in like 40 minutes or 45 minutes, you could probably drop off possibly depending on if you, how much aerobic base building you've had leading into that first uh, four week build up for, for a, a 5K. If you have some general fitness and you have some aerobic fitness and you've done some strides leading into starting a, a four week buildup for a 5K, it, it depends on the athlete, but you could drop several seconds. It, 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 you could have a phenomenal day and maybe drop a minute off of your 5K in a matter of 30 days. But I, again, I think that this is, um, this is a, a natural, you know, it's a question that athletes generally ask. And, and again, they just want to, we're, we want quick results. A lot of athletes really want fast results. I certainly did over the years uh, when I was in college and high school trying to run really quick times in a short amount of time. Uh, whereas the longer you're in the sport, you realize that, hey, if, if I'm going to do this right, the, there's going to be times where I'm challenged and there's going to be times where I don't really run that fast for my 5K. And maybe it's just a matter of me allowing myself some more time to prepare okay if you're if you really want to get the merit or if you really want to get the 5k right i would highly recommend uh focusing on a 16 week block of training four months rather than 30 days four months it's going to go by fast but if you have some time trials in there some like two mile time trials um maybe some tempo runs where, like, where you're going a little bit further than your goal race here maybe four to five mile tempo runs you know, a four to five mile tempo run will help build that stamina that you're going to need in a 5K. But in a matter of, of, of a short 30 day time frame, it's just not enough time for your body to physiologically adapt to uh, dropping a significant amount of time. Now, again, if you're training for a, a 5K and you have four weeks, maybe you're, you're very constrained with time. You have maybe a race that's coming up and it's one month away. Um, I think as long as you're doing some uh, VO2 max workout, once per week, you're doing your long runs, uh, you do a taper going into that. I think with the 5K, you know, I do believe in a 10 day taper rather than a three week taper, but in this case, you're doing, you're only giving yourself 30 days. So I would just drop, and again, this is a 5K, it's not a marathon, so you can recover relatively quick. So I would probably uh, do maybe more like a, a four day taper leading into your goal 5K. If you drop your, your volume and, and intensity sharply leading into that, uh, I do think your chances of dropping some time, whether that's several seconds or, or maybe up to a minute, depending again on how fit you are and how your buildup's gone, I think your chances of doing that is going to be very high because again, you're not going into the race with fatigue legs. You're at least giving yourself about four days of recovery going into that 5K so that again, you, you feel fresh going into it. And again, too, I think if, if you give yourself uh, 30 days and you're doing a VO2 max workout, maybe that's re, you know repeat 200s, maybe 10 to 15 200 meter reps, um, maybe doing uh, some, like three to four 1600 meter reps on the track, some longer intervals. You're doing repeat 600s, some 300s, some some 1K reps on the track, uh, fartlicks, 
on the roads, maybe like 10 to 15, one minute hard, one minute easy, where you're really spiking your heart rate, increasing your lactic, lactic acid, and then dropping back down for a minute, recovering a little bit, but still running uh, at a relatively quick clip, then back into that one minute burst. Again, those types of workouts will help you to not only recruit fast twitch muscle fibers, which will help your goal 5K race pace to eventually feel easier for you. It's gonna improve your body's ability to clear lactic acid more effectively and improve your body's, your, your lactate tolerance, which you want to do. If you're running easy and relaxed 95, 100% of the time, you're just gonna be a long, slow, easy distance runner or middle distance runner. You wanna stress your system, the energy systems, the body adequately enough. Um, but I think it can be, you know, in a 30, 30 day block of training, again, if you've spent, I think especially if you've spent uh, four to eight weeks of building easy aerobic mileage prior to starting that four week block of training, that's a different story. Okay, that is a time, if you've done that, if you spend, you know, a month or two running easy relaxed mileage and you've done some strides during that build up, that aerobic base building phase, and then you started a four week block of specific training, 5K specific race pace uh, workouts, then I think you can drop several seconds, maybe even over a minute in a matter of 30 days. Because again, you've already spent some time trading first before you started that, that 30 day block of training. It's totally different if you're starting from scratch and you're only giving yourself one month of training. You're not, it's gonna be very hard to drop much time at all off of a 5K in a matter of 30 days. So again, it's it's how you're setting, it's your strategy, it's how you're setting up your training. Always a longer 5K training plan is better than a shorter 5K training plan. You're, you're providing more ample time for your body to adapt. You're not throwing all of your, all of your mental and physical capacity and, and cramming it all in a matter of a short 30 day block of training. That's just not enough time. Again, it's enough time to get in decent shape and to be able to start and finish a 5K without a doubt, okay? And But to go out there and drop several minutes off of your 5K time in a matter of one month, it's just unrealistic and it's also gonna stress you out, okay? So always give yourself a minimum of 12 weeks, preferably four months to really prepare properly for a 5K, okay? You're gonna drop several minutes off. You're, you're gonna, and also if you're running a 5K, whether you're only giving yourself 30 days or not, where you're giving yourself much more time, hold back that first mile, okay? Get out aggressively for about the first 200 meters. You can practically sprint all out for the first 200 meters and not build up any lactic acid. But hold back a little bit in that first mile. And then once you get to the mile point, make it an all out 2.1 mile race. I promise you, more than likely, you're gonna set a new personal best and you're gonna drop significant time off your 5K time if you do that. You don't wanna go out so slow the first mile though that you lose contact, but you wanna get out aggressive but hold back you know, relatively considerably in that first mile. And then once you get to the mile point, make it a 2.1 mile race, run all out, run as hard as you possibly can all the way to the finish line. So in your mind you're thinking, okay, really this is a 2.1 mile race, it's not a 3.1 mile race. I'm going to let my competitors go out way too fast in that first mile. I'm going to let them blow up. I'm going to let them redline. And then I'm going to catch them in the last 2.1 miles. That's how I would race a 5K. That's how I ran 14.18 on the roads. Um, that's how I ran 15.48 as a high school athlete on the roads as well. My coach told me to hold back that first mile. And I did so. And I attacked as soon as I got to the mile point and ran as hard as I possibly could that last 2.1 miles. So that's my answer to, to how, how much time can you, can you drop off your 5K in 30 days. I, I hope what I'm saying here really makes sense to all of you and hope you give yourself more time than 30 days. So thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching my videos. Uh, check out the resources below these videos. If you have a question or, or a comment, feel free to leave it. I will definitely respond back to you. And I'll talk to you guys and gals all in the next video.